Welcome back to 2020 Tech for You. Today we're gonna let the kittens choose our gaming PC parts for Titi. Hi. So what do you say, Aiden? Are these kittens gonna pick up some good parts? Yeah. Tell everybody to subscribe. As I said in the intro, we're gonna be letting the kittens choose our PC parts today for Titi's new build. He's just basically getting the upgrade, but I decided to do a little bit more than that today. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen Oreo in the background. She had some kittens. She had four healthy kittens. Hershey over here. That's Reese's. Who's this? S'mores the sleeper. S'mores the sleeper. And cake over there. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a gaming area. We're gonna put down some tape, make four squares, put one part in each square, and where the most kittens go, that, that will be the parts we use for the gaming PC. Sound like fun? Yeah. Wait, that's not his kitten. Don't you have Reese's? We did. Yeah, Reese's. Oh, wait, that one, that one, and that one, no. Once we figure out our kittens, we'll get started with the game. I know everything here looks pretty cool. Some of it is not. Some of it's more lower grade, but not too bad, I promise. I promise not too bad. Now, we do have an issue where we have a couple mini ITX boards and mini ITX cases. So we're gonna have to do this video in a proper order because you can't put a full size ATX motherboard in a mini ITX build. So what we're going to start with to help us define our build will be the, the case. That way it doesn't matter which motherboard they pick. If they pick mini ITX, that could fit in the case. You ready to get these kittens going, Aiden? Yeah. So when we come back, we're gonna have the area designated for the kittens and yeah. we're gonna have four of the cases yeah. on the floor yeah, we do. and then the kids will do a flip like that and pick their butts also we have a referee that's hazel over there hazel you ready for this hazel looks ready guys i hope she didn't take any money in the background you got that crazy look in your eye so what i'm gonna do in the beginning is introduce the parts so that way you guys know what we're using to build his gaming pc well kind of we won't be using all of this but before we get into all that guys don't forget there are links down below for everything you'll see in this video so the first part on the map is that Lee and Lee mid tower case I always forget the name of that case but I'll put the name of it on top then we have our NZXT H510 I Elite all that means is is an extra $70-$80 so it comes with basically a RGB fan hub control that cam uses the software for nzxt then we have our tower 100 mini itx case and then we have our inwin a1 mini itx pc case over there now i do have videos for some of these cases you can find all these on the channel so round one choosing the pc tower you guys ready to get your kittens going yep So that's the end of round one. The kittens have wow. chosen the NZXT 510i Elite case. No, no. And now it's time to choose the motherboard. So starting in that corner, we have the Prime B450M. Then we have the full-size ATX X570 Plus from Tough Gaming Wi-Fi. Over here in this corner, we have the Azrock X570 Steel Legend full-size ATX motherboard. And in the corner, we have the B450 IA Ors Pro Wi-Fi Mini ITX motherboard. And this is why we did the case first, because no matter what, any of these will fit in that full-size tower. He can end up with an X570 Steel Legend or an X570 Tough. Your divorce pretty cool. You ready to do this, Aiden? Yeah. Well, too. Ooh. 
Okay, so we have to call a timeout because it looks like Mama's feeding her kittens. Somebody get Hershey and put Hershey over there so they could get some milk. Okay, so first rounds, we got our case pick, we got our motherboard pick. Now it's on to our CPU. One of these I didn't get a box for. We got the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X. We got the Ryzen 7 3700X. And we got the Ryzen 9 5900X. How did that get down there? Okay, that's a little scary. So that must be the G. Don't step on that one, please. That one's got the pins. This is the Ryzen 3200G. Here you guys go. The 53600, the 3200G, the 3700X, and 5900X. Actually, no, we're going to remove the 5900X. And we're going to put the 52600 down there. So, sorry guys, we're gonna scrub the 5900X and we're gonna put the 2600 down there. It's better for gaming for him. That's gonna have too many cores. The 3700X at eight cores, it's, it, it's good, yes, for gaming and also streaming and other things, but he doesn't do that, he just games. So, we'll take the 5900X out of there and we're gonna put the 2600 in there. Round three, let's pick our CPU. And it's not the 5900X in that box, guys. I apologize. That's a 2600. So, all right, guys, time for round four. We are choosing the power supply. A EVGA 850 watt gold SFX power supply. A 80 plus, just 80 plus EVGA 500 watt. We got a Seasonic Focus 650 watt. And then we have a Corsair 650 watt semi-modular power supply. Is that out of bounds? No, no, not out of bounds. Referee's checking them. Referee's making sure all is clear. And next, the kittens will have to choose the RAM. We have some Trident RGB. These are 16 gig sticks a piece, totaling 32 gigs, 3200 mega transfers per second with a cast latency of 18. Then we have some Trident Zs over here, RGBs. These are mega transfers per second, I believe 36 with a CL18. We have a 16 gigabyte set of Crucial Ballistics. They are also 3200 CL16. And we have some Corsair Vengeant RGB Pros. They're actually the black ones. The white ones are in another set. And these are also 3200 mega transfers per second CL16. And now it's time for the cooler. First off, we have the AMD stock cooler. Then we have the ROG Ryo 240. That one has a screen on it. We have the Noctua NHD 15 Chromax Block Edition. And he also has a choice chance of winning the Be Quiet Pure Loop 240. So it's time for the part everybody's been waiting for. Everybody meaning Titi. Let's start in the top left. 
you could win an AMD Radeon 5700 XT Red Devil by Power Color, an ASUS Auto Extreme GeForce GTX 1660 Super 6 gig card, you can win an AMD RX 484 gig, or you could win this NVIDIA GTX 460 1 gig. Pretty much unanimous. Pick that up for him, Duke, and put it over your head like Thor. And that's it, guys. The kittens have chose the parts. The SSDs, these are his already, so he's got an NVMe SSD and a two and a half inch. We got a ghetto bird flying overhead because we live in Bel Air next to Beverly Hills. What I'm gonna do next is clean all this up, take all this in the back. We're gonna build this PC, then we're gonna benchmark it and see how the kittens did. I'm gonna let the kids get out of here because they're all being tortured by me making this video. So again, we got a Ryzen 5 2600. We got an ASUS 6 gigabyte GeForce GTX 1660 Super OC. Great graphics card, guys. Love this graphics card. Always will be my number one go-to graphics card for a beginner, somebody new to the PC gaming world, especially somebody with a 1080p monitor. We got ourselves two sticks, so a total of 16 gigs of RAM, of some Corsair Avengers Pro RGB. They're not the whites, they're the black ones inside of here. Same exact sticks, just a different color. 3200 mega transfers per second, CL16, I wanna say. Yeah, CL16. They're not the tightest in the world, it's not the fastest in the world, but again, this is a Ryzen 5 2600. This would be probably the best you could do for that CPU to tell you the truth. A 500 watt non-modular EVGA power supply. It's rated just 80 plus. Not bronze, not gold, not titanium, just 80 plus. This is his one terabyte team group AX2. These are great little drives. Again, links down below for everything. That's his mass storage drives. One terabyte, more than enough for him again. 256 gig, I believe this is the Inland Premier NVMe SSD. It's PCIe Gen 3 by 4. So now we're starting to get to the parts that make no sense. ASRock X570 Steel Legend. This is a, it's a good board. It's got a 10 power phase design. Uh, it's got steel slot PCIe to kind of hold the graphics card a little bit better so it doesn't sag so easily. These gra these uh, motherboards, excuse me, start at around two to $250 for this motherboard exactly. And it's full size ATX. That's why it'll fit in this case perfectly. And it, it, it's flashy, you know what I mean? It, it also has like this camo look. The ROG Ride. 240 liquid CPU cooler it has a LCD screen you can put like little like short clips on there or pictures on there you could display the temperatures it's got RGB it does not have uh, RGB fans on it that's pretty stupid right it's got this crazy screen and this RGB that goes around it but yet the fans don't have RGB a little crazy right yeah a little crazy but this cooler starts I believe at 199 so we got a $250 motherboard a $200 cooler going on a Ryzen 5 2600 this CPU is gonna be living cool sitting in a motherboard that could give it way more than it can even handle but whatever now the case this is again the nzxt 510 i elite it basically has the rgb fan hub controller that connects to the cam software so this one is a little bit more expensive but this is the one with the glass front so no airflow basically the airflow is impeded pretty bad by this front panel this front glass if i could get the uh, mesh panel for this one i'll get it for him and replace this but it could pull an air from the side which isn't optimal it could pull an air from the bottom it's got only one i believe this is could fit maybe a 240 fan at the top for exhaust one 240 at the rear for exhaust so yeah this case didn't really make much sense to me it is a nice case it isn't an ugly case but for the price i expect a little bit of airflow and that is all the parts we're going to be using our iFixit tool set to put this all together. We got some thermal paste sitting over there somewhere. We got our back scratcher sitting right here. And next, what we're going to do is to actually put this PC together. That'll be a quick montage for you guys. And after the montage, we're going to benchmark this PC and see how well does it game. 
So during the build montage, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and don't forget you can donate directly to the channel to help the channel. We really could use the help, guys. We want to make this channel something, build it up. So we can't do that without your guys' help. So down below, you will find ways of helping. If not, you can message me directly, and I can tell you guys how you can help the channel. And with that all said and out of the way, let's get this build montage going. Where do I start? I think I'm gonna start with the ram again. I, I like starting with the ram. Ram's a good place to start. Grab the cards and the weight. Where am I? Where's my tools? There's my tools. Who am I? I'm the greatest. Who am I? I'm getting paid. Who am I? I'm so flagrant. Who am I? I'm the greatest. Who am I? I'm getting paid. Who am I? I'm so flagrant. I'm running the race and I'm faster than them. Yeah, yeah. All of the trash, forget them. I'm running the race and I'm faster than them. Yeah, yeah. All of the trash, forget them. So... Chillin', sit back and recline. Keep bad vibes on your side of the line. Don't call my phone, yeah, I'm doing fine. Look at the time, run with the line. What you got? I don't need, I don't want it. What I got? You know me, I'm a front it. Who you got? Ain't no me, they don't got it. La 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 la. You got 
know you guys probably hear a lot of people talking, a lot of noise going on. I apologize again. I don't have any money for me to run. I mean, there's no money to get a little studio. Four walls, guys. I'm looking for something. 100 bucks a month. I could put my stuff and do videos. Yeah, whatever. So moving on. Check out ways of helping the channel down below. Some of you may see that I left the 140s in the front and I put the 120s on the radiator. Well, this case's airflow is not really the most optimal case airflow oriented designed PC case tower, whatever. This case is like, I don't want airflow. I don't understand it. It's one of my favorite looking cases. Seriously, this case is gorgeous. It's like airflow, what's that? Psh, I don't need airflow. Let's choke everything off and see how hard we could push it. That's like the attitude of this case. So this case only gets air from a small vent down in the front a small strip about this long that goes down here and I think a little bit more over here yeah and then down here at the bottom but that also shares with the power supply then it only has a mount for a 140 I believe at the top you can put a 240 right here okay just to let you know uh, yeah a 140 you cannot put a 140 a 240 millimeter radiator at the top because the top of this case only has room for one fan for exhaust one fan at the rear for exhaust and then they put the two 140s at the front to bring in and again the air has got to come in at an angle and go then go that way at the bottom it's got to come in through a little slit and go up that's why i left the two 140s in the front then i put the two 120s on the rad pulling so we got a pull pull push pull config going on over here to try and help pull more air in to not suffocate our radiator and compromise airflow through the rest of this case believe it or not by doing this there's actually a lot of airflow in this case that's why i did that off looking fan orientation in this case that's just extra airflow that's all am i going to change the configuration in this case no nope this is what they chose this is the video you clicked on and these are the parts that are staying in this pc I'll tell you guys about the configuration i had this pc set up in first off i had the fan set to around earshot you know what i mean probably around 60 percent right to where you would start hearing the fans on the radiator and the exhaust actually you could start hearing them i believe that's a good trade-off right there just a little bit of fan sound just to keep the right amount of cooling. That way, you know, I can keep the temps, you know, in check because more or less I'm more worried about the GPU than I am the CPU. Well, that CPU has that CLC on it. Did nothing to the CPU, just left it alone as is. So it was hitting probably around 3.7 majority of the time, holding 3.7 gigahertz. Sometimes I see it boost up to about 3.775, somewhere in there, 3.25, but never hitting four gigahertz at any point. It's the rise of 52600. Pretty sure if I overclocked it, I probably could have locked all the cores somewhere around 3.8 anyways. I used MSI Afterburner for the GPU. All I did was give the power limit all it's got. I threw an extra megahertz on the core clock and an extra 100 on the memory. So just real fast, an easy overclock that any 16 Super should do. I don't think I've ever seen a 16 Super not do those two things, three things. And that's pretty much how the overclock went with this. Basic, simple, easy as can be. So now let's talk temps and how it's running. And the temps are, we got 36C on the CPU, uh, the GPU's at 48C, and there's no load. It's just sitting here idle. I just have this up from the first run of 3D Mark. And let's get into that right now. But I ran 3D Mark time spy twice. Once in stock, not doing anything, and then once in the overclock configuration I told you guys about. So let's see what it did in 3D Mark time spot. So stock configuration, the score was a 5,829. The average is around 6,039, and the best somebody's ever got is a 7,013. So as you can tell, it's just below average by a few hundred points. In the overclock position, it hits 6,163, which would actually bring it just above average by about 100 points or so, and still pretty far off from the best. In the first graphics test, it, it was getting 38 and a half FPS. Then in the overclock, it was getting 41.02. So it was getting over two and a half frames per second more. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but again, this is just turning those dials over just a little bit. In the second uh, gra graphics test, in the regular config, 34 frames per second, and over here, 36 and a half frames per second. You know, a couple more frames here and there, not bad. 
So again, turning those knobs gave us more than average point score, if anything, it's average, than where we were in stock. Why not turn them over, you know what I mean? Now, let's talk temps. So the temps, I'm gonna just say all around while testing, the GPU never went above 69C in any test. The CPU never went above 41C at any time during any of these tests. 41C on the CPU, 69C on the GPU. Great numbers on both of these. Again, could dial up everything just a little bit more and actually get a little bit more performance out of it. Let's start with Far Cry 5. All these tests, I put all the settings to the highest quality possible. This way you could see that if you finesse the graphics a little bit, some highs here, some mediums there, turn a dial and MSI afterburner, you're gonna get better performance than this one's getting right now. So quality, the overclock position, Far Cry 5, ultra quality, GPU, minimum frames per second was 59 FPS, average was 77, and a max of 102. So yeah, the min, the min and the max is pretty far off. You're gonna see some dips here and there. But again, if you change the quality, you, you'll bring that a lot closer together and it'll play probably a lot nicer. Forza 4, ultra quality, minimum FPS was 75.5 FPS, average of 96.4, and a max of 176.3 FPS. Again, at ultra quality. Bring those down, use the recommended system specs. It'll probably do way better than that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next. The highest quality hair and everything to the highest average frames per second was 75 frames per second. This is all great numbers. Again, finessing the medium and high settings did a lot more than that. And now for Cyberpunk 2077. Highest quality, no FSR, nothing like that. Just highest quality I could put everything to. The average frames was 55.24 frames per second with a minimum of 26.42 and a max of 96.18. You know, for 1080p gaming, that right there was playable. I messed around a little bit and it was playable. A minimum, it was holding somewhere around 58, it would hit 62 when I was just playing the game and it was playable. It had its dips, you'd see dips. All in all, it was playable. So again, had I messed with the settings, brought it down to medium or something, it probably would have played a lot better. And those were the tests I actually ran. Just like to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You got to meet the kittens that Oreo had. They're actually bigger today. And I think they're started moving to the front room now. They're running all over the house. How many before it gets cold? Gotta go eat before it gets cold. That was the wife. So guys, i just like to remind you guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoyed today's content. And I will see you guys on the next video. Late. I'm still stuck in the 90s. Late. How about hasta la vida? No, dude, that's just worse. Late. See you guys later. Yeah. Let it go there.